everybody, it's Mrs. B again and you are watching Busy Bee's channel. We are in the kitchen again today and I have a little quiz for you. Have a look at that. These are all things that I use in the kitchen. It's not decoration, it's useful and the question is what do you use it for? <laughs> Let's have a look what I have. Have you ever seen something like that? What could you use that one for? I think that's the easiest actually what about this one look what do you do with that those ones <laughs> that's tricky probably what do you do with those hmm again this is not decoration that is that has a purpose that is for use and what about this one this is not a placement to tell you it's something else. Now, what are those things? Well, let's see what you knew. This is a sushi mat. Maybe you recognized it. If you have a sushi and you have to roll it, this is how you roll your sushi. Look at that. Okay, that is my sushi mat. So, to roll it up. Those ones, I like those ones. Look. Those are to put your chopsticks down when you eat and you want to have a little break and you don't want to put it on the table. This is where you place your chopsticks. I found them in Chinatown in New York and I think they are adorable. This one is a really curious one. I wouldn't have bought that myself, but that was a present and I kept it because I thought it was funny. If you have something like that, like mustard or mayonnaise, you can roll this one up at the end to make sure you get all out of the stuff that is inside here. So you, you just roll it down, yeah, that is Those ones. Now, I'm sure you wondered what those ones are, look. <laughs> That's very simple. It's only a placemat. If you have a hot pot, you don't want to put it on your table. You just use them. I like those, they are nice. And this one, maybe that is the easiest for you. Look what you can do. Um, here you have different kinds, what you can do. And have a look at that. You cut your carrots in another way. I really like that. I use that quite often because that looks nice and cooks fast and it's different. So even my boys at home like to eat carrots when I do them like that. So sometimes you have um, a thing that is not very obvious what you do with that and then you need an explanation. And the perfect way to explain something is using a relative clause. For example, I want to describe that and I say it's a gadget which you use to cut carrots. And that explains this little gadget or this little machines. And I will explain to you now how relative clauses work. Let's talk about relative clauses now. You take a relative clause if you want to describe something closer as you have seen in the kitchen. We have different words that we can use. Uh, let's have a look at the first sentence. The woman who always wears funny necklaces is Mrs. B. I described the woman closer, there are many women, and the woman who always wears funny necklaces, that's me. And there is a very good way to keep in mind what to take. It's a memory aid. You know that already, probably. You can make a smiley in here. That means who is for persons. Very easy to keep in mind. The next one. Don't forget to read the book which I gave you last week. That was the Harry Potter. And it's a book, so it's a thing. And then we use the word which. Which can have a little dot here. That means we use it for things. If you describe things, you use which. If you get lost and if you say, well, I can't remember that, which is really very easy, but if you say, oh, I get mixed up, that 
is always possible. You can use it for persons, you can use it for things. That is always good. So you could say, the woman that always wears funny necklaces is Mrs. B. You could also say, don't forget to read the book that I gave you last week. There is a little special one, it's the who's. Who's, you can see here the word that is printed in a different way. Are you the boy whose aunt works in Althengstedt? Whose is deren oder dessen? And you use it in combination with a person that is behind the word whose. Okay, but you don't really need that that often. So again, who is for person, which is for things, and that is possible for anything. I have a little cartoon here. You might like that. The pupil says, Sir, you can't be punished for something that you didn't do, can you? And the teacher says, No, of course not. The pupil answers, Well, I didn't do my homework. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, it's a relative clause, and I'm sure you found the dad here that explains something that you didn't do. I think it's quite funny. The ninth and 10th graders might need the contact clauses. Contact clauses are relative clauses without the who, the which or the that. Relativsätze ohne Relativpronomen. Und hier steht, wenn who, which oder that Objekt des Relativsatzes sind, werden sie häufig weggelassen. Ja, super. Das Problem ist nur, was ist denn das Subjekt, was ist das Objekt? Ihr habt da mega Schwierigkeiten. Ich kann euch das nicht verübeln, das ist nicht einfach. Aber es gibt einen Trick, wie man rausfinden kann, ob man es weglassen kann. Das ist mein persönlicher Trick. Have a look at that. The first sentence is a very ordinary relative clause. The girl who comes from Ostelsheim is very nice. Again, I have the who because I describe a person. The girl who comes from Ostelsheim is very nice. That's a normal relative clause. We are not talking about that. Have a look at the second sentence. The girl who I met yesterday is very nice. If you have a person after the who, the which and the that, you can skip the who, which or that. You can leave it out. That means, that looks much better, the girl I met yesterday is very nice. Okay? In the second sentence, we can also skip that. The tomatoes which I planted in my garden are growing very well. I have a person after the which, so I can skip the which. And then the sentence would be, the tomatoes I planted in my garden are growing very well. That sounds very sophisticated if you use a contact clause. You don't have to skip it, but if you know how to do that, that shows me that you really understood that. Again who, which, and that, plus a person. That means you can cross those ones out. Okay? Now we turn the quiz round. You can send me a picture of something that is not obvious, that I have to guess what it is, or you send me a description of a gadget, or a thing, or a person with a relative clause and I have to guess what it is or who it is. I'm looking forward to what you sent me. Bye!